Welcome to this week's sim racing video. Apologies, it's a day late. I've been waiting for a load cell to arrive, which is this little thing here. Um, I was hoping it'd be here in time for yesterday, but it wasn't, so it's gonna be out today instead. Now, this is a follow-on from last week's video where I spoke about the AXC Sim brake pedal mod or conversion for the Logitech G series of pedals. Um, and if you saw that video last week, obviously you can see I wasn't very happy that it was being marketed as a load cell conversion when it's a potentiometer based setup. Now, I've since spoken to Rob from AXC, so moving back and forth over a few emails, and he has since revised the URL and the description to make it clear to people that it's not a load cell, like one of these, that you would find in you know a set of fanatic pedals or who's in or you know the other top end stuff now a loso is a very specific electronic device and let me get in close and you'll see what we've got here so there's just three wires coming off of it there's no moving parts and this uh, basically registers pressure in the in the center there or this area here. if you apply pressure that's what it registers. You don't see anything move. All that happens is the metal literally distorts or flexes ever so slightly, almost, you know, almost like a, almost on an atomic level, it's so small. And depending on the type of load cell, that either generates a small electrical current or it varies resistance um, based on a voltage input output scenario. So, you can see how, and these are what you'll find in, in like, you know, home digital scales and stuff as well, one on each corner, um, because they literally convert force into either electrical current or, or resistance. Now, that's essentially what a type of transducer does. It converts one form of energy into another. So in this case, it's converting the force we apply with our feet to either an electrical current or to resistance, depending on the type of load cell it is. But that's what a load cell is. That's, that's what it does. It's literally, you know, this, this is a direct replacement for one of the Fanatic ones. So it is exactly what you'd find in those higher end pedals. And you just have to apply that downward force. And I'll demonstrate this on the PC in a minute. Now for this to work, you need a little interface board in the middle there and then a controller board here with also a USB interface attached to that to plug into your computer so it knows what it is and what to do with it. So that is a load cell. That's how a load cell works. It converts one form of energy into another, in this case, force, pressure, into electrical current or resistance. And feel free to you know, look this all up yourselves if you don't just wanna take my word for it. Now, the other type of brake pedal we see in the lower end stuff, the, the G series Logitech and the lower end Thrustmaster pedals is your potentiometer based pedals. And potentiometers simply vary the resistance they apply to a known voltage based on their position. So whether the pedal's all the way up, whether the pedal's all the way down, it's gonna change the voltage across that range. So maybe a, a, a higher voltage when the pedal's all the way up, and as you depress the pedal and the resistance increases as you're moving that potentiometer, the voltage drops as well. I haven't actually measured the voltage to see whether it goes high to low or low to high. It's not important. All you need to understand is, as that potentiometer moves from its start position to its end position, it's varying resistance and lowering voltage in one direction or the other. Now the AXC SIM mod for these pedals is also potentiometer based. This is what last week's video was about. And it does the same thing. It varies the same voltage that the Logitech series puts out to its standard potentiometer. Um, and it varies it across exactly the same range as well because it's just plug and play it pops in with no additional conversion or electronics anyway you you can go back to last week's video and see that if you want but as i say rob has now amended the description uh, and the url to make it clear that it's not a load cell uh, based conversion because what we didn't want was people buying that thinking they were buying a load cell conversion when you know when they're not because it's a very specific thing it's a very specific device so uh, yeah, he's made that clear now, so that's that's all good. And the product does look great. I do have one here now, and that will be being reviewed 
probably next Friday, um, assuming I get time to get it all installed in and try it all out. Now I've got my, my uh, G920 pedals here um, opened up so I can show you the potentiometer inside and show you how it works. So whilst I've got this open, I'll also install that modification. I'll probably video it um, just so I can include it in next week's review as well. So you've seen what a load cell looks like now. Literally, that is all there is to it. You've got this outer section that would sit flush on whatever you sit it on, and then you apply pressure to the top, your interface board, your controller board to get it to work. So I'm gonna move the camera around now and show you the potentiometer in the Logitech pedals and show you how that works. And then we're gonna move over to some screen grab of me actually moving these two devices, both attached to the PC, and you'll be able to see exactly how they operate. You'll see the bars go up and down in the control panel as I do it all, and you'll be able to see the difference between how the potentiometer works and how the load cell works. So, give me a sec, I'll move the camera around and we'll show you the potentiometer. Okay, hopefully this is clear enough uh, on the camera. It's a slightly awkward thing for me to, to do, but if you look here where my finger is, that is a rotary potentiometer, a bit like you would find on a volume control knob or something similar to, to that where you, would, where you would turn it to vary volume or gain or I don't know, even a dimmer switch, you know, brightness up and down on the light, you, you would use. And in fact, in your car, you'll have, a lot of cars have um, dashboard dimmers, which will be like a little rotary dial that you spin with your thumb to adjust the brightness of your, your dashboard. So same thing, potentiometers. So let's just have a little, little goosey in here. So here's, I've disconnected the, the spring and what have you from the standard pedal. So you can see we can just move the pedal all the way up and all the way down. And it will just, I can put it halfway, I can put it three quarters, I can put it a quarter. It will sit wherever I, wherever I leave it. And what that's doing is on the back of this potentiometer on this side, there's a little lever attached to a little rod that runs through. And it's just, it's just rotating it, same as you rotating a, you know, a volume knob or any other knob. Let's just turn it around this way. Oh yeah, you can see, so you can see the mechanism here. There's just some teeth that engage on the back of the pedal here with a little arm that's on the back of the potentiometer. And as you move it up and down, it's just rotating the back of the pot. In fact, you can see the rod that comes out of the pot just where my finger is there at the tip. Um, so that's all it does. It's just rotating that potentiometer it will stay where you leave it and it varies the voltage based on the position of the pedal. And this is the key difference here between potentiometers and load cells. Potentiometers literally just measure the movement of the pedal, where it is, not how hard you press it. This potentiometer does not care how hard I press this pedal down. You know, it really couldn't give, give a crap. Um, it's irrelevant, it doesn't know any different, it doesn't affect the way it performs, it doesn't alter the voltage based on that, it, or the speed, same, it doesn't care how fast I do it either. All it does is a certain voltage all the way up, a certain voltage all the way down, and every little position in between, the voltage is varied ever so slightly as well. And that is how the game, or whatever software you're using, knows where this pedal is. And this is why you have to calibrate them sometimes, because these are not a super precise item and they can give a slightly different voltage top and bottom. So when you calibrate them, you calibrate them all the way up and then you calibrate them all the way down. Um, and then that way when you vary it in between, the range is correct. I must apologize, my cat Ori is doing laps of the sofa, shouting her head off for some reason. I think she wants to go outside and play. Um, she escaped last night, she's a house cat, she got out of the window and I had to go and find her. Um, anyway, um, that's beside the point. Let's, uh, let's carry on with this video. So yeah, that's a potentiometer. That's an example of one type of potentiometer. As I mentioned in the previous video, you can have slide potentiometers uh, like you'll find on cross faders and up faders on DJ mixers. And then you'll find other types of linear potentiometer like in the AXC sim mod um, where they slide in and out in the center of like a barrel type position. But they're all potentiometers, they all work in the same way, which is also why the AXC sim one just plugs straight into these three wires, as you'll see next week. So yeah, there's a potentiometer. It doesn't care about pressure. It doesn't care about force. It doesn't 
convert one type of energy into another, it simply varies its resistance based on the position of the pedal in this case, but in reality, the position of the little rod that comes out the middle of it. So, you've seen that, you've seen the low cell. Now, let's get them, let's just say hello, hello. Now let's get them plugged into the PC and you'll see in the control panel on the little bars, how this translates into the input on the PC and how the load cell translates the force you apply into the input on the PC as well. Right, so we've got, first of all, look at the Logitech input. Let me just start some screen capture here. Yeah, okay, that's great. So what you can see in the middle of the screen here is just the game controller's control panel. Up, you can see the accelerator, the brake, and the clutch. Um, so there's our accelerator, there's our brake, there's our clutch. Now, we're looking at the brake pedal. The spring's disconnected, so there's gonna be nothing to return the pedal back to the start position. So this is how the potentiometer base system works. Currently the pedal's all the way up. Let's push it all the way down. So that's the pedal all the way down. Now, in a game right now, that would be registering 100% braking force, even though I have not even got a finger on the pedal, let alone a foot. And this is because it does not care about pressure. It doesn't care about how hard you press it, it just cares about where it is in its rotation. So we can bring it up to the middle, and again, I can let go of the, the pedal, and it stays exactly where it is. We can go down to, I don't know, three quarters, we can go up to a quarter, we can go all the way back up, we can go any and all places in between, and the pedal just stays exactly where it is, as does the registered input on the computer and as a result in game. So you can clearly see there, potentiometers just care about position. Not that they care about anything, they're not conscious, they don't think. Um, but the way they operate is that they just vary that voltage based on their position. So, you know, you can see there, we just move it up and down, up and down, leave it wherever the hell we want, and it's just gonna stay there. The only thing in this setup that returns your braking force to zero is the spring, pushing the pedal back up to the top position like that. And again, with the AXC SIM modification, it's a dual spring setup. It still just returns the pedal to the start position and it returns the inbuilt potentiometer on that mod to its start position also. Again, like I said in the other video, if we took the springs out of that and pushed the potentiometer down in it, it would register full braking force just like we're seeing here with this potentiometer base setup. So that's how your potentiometer works. Now, let's close down that one and let's bring up my load cell interface here. Now this isn't gonna be the easiest thing to demonstrate because I have to physically apply some force to the load cell. And well, it's a load cell and it's designed to be pressed by your foot. So it requires quite a bit of force. I'm just gonna try and wedge it here. So hopefully you can see it. Um, and I don't even know whether I'm going to be able to push it hard enough with my thumb to register an input. Oh yeah, you can see, just, just about. So the Y rotation is what we're registering here. It's registering a very small input, um, even when I'm not pressing it. And that's because you can adjust with this setup the zero point. So I've just got rid of that there by turning this little adjuster here. Now the reason I'm leaving it up is because this is basically it's a sensitivity adjuster. I need it to be more sensitive because my thumb is not gonna have enough force to act like my foot. But you can see as I press it, oh, I almost broke my Logitech pedals. As I press it, it's registering an input and that's about as much as I can press using my thumb and leaving a nice little indentation on the inside there. So that, there's your, there's your clear and obvious difference between a load cell and a potentiometer based setup. You know, with that load cell, you can't just take your springs out and leave it. Let me just, apologies, but I'm gonna move the camera so I can talk to you guys. Um, oops, stay there. Very professional look. Um, yeah, so with that load cell, you can see you cannot just remove your springs and, you know, push it and it stay where you left it. It relies 100% on how hard you're pushing on it, not 
the position of it because it, it doesn't have a position. It's not a position sensor. It's not a potentiometer. You know, it doesn't work in the same way. Um, I really hope this has been as clear as it can be. You know, I do. I don't really script these. Well, I don't script these videos. I just make them up as I go along. So, hopefully, it's flowed reasonably well. Hopefully, now you have an understanding of the difference between a potentiometer-based pedal, which is what you find in the low-end stuff, uh, and the load cell-based pedals that you find in the higher-end equipment. Now, there will be a review next Friday of the AXC SIM brake pedal modification. Um, I hope now you can see why, you know, last week's video, if you did see it, I wasn't particularly pleased to see it being advertised as a load cell conversion, you know, when it's potentiometer based. You can see the clear difference between the two now. But as I say, big respect to Rob um, from, from there because he has changed the description to make it clear. He has changed the URL um, and it's no longer as misleading as it was, which is really good to see. Also, he doesn't come across having spoken to him as the sort of guy that would intentionally mislead people. Although, you know, to me and to others reading down the page, it did look very, very obvious, obviously sort of swayed towards trying to pitch it as a load cell. Um, but you know, it's been changed, it's been put right, and all is well with the world, so to speak. It does look like a great modification. I have had it out of the box and had a quick peek. Build quality already looks good, first impressions are good, it's well packaged uh, as well. So I'm gonna get that installed now, uh, and then you'll see next Friday, hopefully, a full review of that and, and how it is. But hopefully today's video has been useful. Thanks as always for my supporters, patrons, uh, those couple of you, um, those of you that uh, donate, uh, and of course manufacturers that send me bits and bobs for review as well. It's very much appreciated. So have a nice weekend. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you all in the next one.